Hello, everyone, and welcome to SE Geek Bootcamp. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about closures. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. So, I mentioned uh, previously that last episode I was going to talk about closures, but I never really got to it. So, I'm coming back with another episode just on closures in general, just to give you an idea of how they work and you know what use they are. Um, closures are actually uh, very useful in something called functional programming, and uh, you'll see why in just a moment. So... Closures are essentially just like functions, uh, except for they're specified a little differently, and I'll show you that here. So right here we have a variable called even, and we're assigning into that a block, kind of like a function, and we have a parameter, which uh, I don't think in any of the other functions I showed this, but you could have multiple parameters here, like, you know, num um, not bumper, but... Uh, number two uh, you know as with uh, any of the functions you can do that but we're just going to use number here and we have this little uh, syntax which is you know specifically for closures uh, in groovy anyways and uh, we're just returning number uh, mod which uh, essentially uh, I haven't talked about this before but mod is uh, like when you uh, take two numbers and divide them, uh, if you take the remainder, th that's what the mod gives you, is it gives you the remainder. So if you take uh, this number, divide it by two, uh, and there was like a remainder uh, after that, uh, basically, you know, the mod would not equal zero. But if you take that and the remainder would be zero, so meaning it's divisible by two, the modulus of this would equal zero. So basically, what what it, the modulus just gives you the remainder of uh, a division operation, which is actually very useful. Here I'm using it uh, to tell if something is odd or even, and here I'm doing the opposite and telling you if something is odd, because if something's divisible by two and you wouldn't have no uh, remainder, uh, the, the modulus would equal zero, and uh, otherwise the modulus would not equal zero. So I have uh, a uh, even and an odd closure, uh, which is just the same as this one, but a little different uh, condition here. So now if I run like even on two, Obviously, here I get true because this results in a true statement. However, if I put, say, 3 here and run it, I get false. So this is just, you know, running that closure right in line. No big deal. Um, but one of the things that, one of the cornerstones of functional programming and closures uh, being part of that is the fact that you uh, functions are fun, uh, uh, first class citizens, meaning you can pass them around just like variables, which can be very powerful. Um, it also can uh, get you in trouble if you misuse it, but I'm gonna show you a quick little example here of how you can actually use uh, these particular closures. So I have another function, which is not a closure, which takes a list and a selector which a selector is just going to be our closure, and it goes over uh, the list, does it dot each, and then it checks uh, to see if the selector, uh, the variable from the list, passes it into the selector, runs that. If that this uh, results in true, then it prints the number. Otherwise, it doesn't. So what we can do with this is something a little fancy is uh, we can, you know, call this uh, function select numbers and we're passing it a list with, you know, one through four and we're going to pass it the even selector, which means that it should print out two and four. So if I run this, it prints out two and four. So uh, conversely, if I run the same method, 
Let's, same list, except for using odd, I should get uh, one and three printed out. So if I run that, I get one and three. So I'm actually passing this uh, closure to the method, uh, to not to the method, to this function. I haven't gotten to methods yet. That's in uh, the object-oriented episode, which was supposed to be the next episode, but I'm doing this one in between. So that's just a, a very uh, quick way of showing you uh, what you can do with closures. Now, closures are used in a lot of different uh, programming languages, uh, most notably, uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say most notably, but notably, uh, JavaScript uses closures, especially with callbacks um, and uh, things of that nature. But uh, And there's other languages like uh, Lisp and uh, Clojure, which is, uh, cl which is uh, spelled differently from this. It's actually Clojure. Uh, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but anyways, there's a, another one. Uh, language that's you know it's a it's actually a variant of uh, Lisp, which is uh, uses uh, functional programming a, a lot more than other uh, ways of programming. So that's pretty much all I had to say for closures, and I'll see you next time for the last episode when I talk about object-oriented programming.